Coming up on this episode of Solution Based Community presents the Get Together for the Love of Money, Part One. When you get fired from your salesman job, you got to thank God for giving you what you prayed for, even though you got to struggle in that moment. Now, I'm only as good as I am now because I've hit rock bottom. I've lost it all. I know what it's like to be homeless. But those who have those hardships and can make it through, they are the ones who can persevere in order to be what they ought to be. Because sometimes their parents make too much money to get financial aid but not enough to put them through school. Mm -hmm. So they're like, yes. well, I gotta make money somehow. Yep. Unfortunately, they go to the block. One time, that's all you need is one time for an employer to look at the rest of them and be like. All of you, in one way, are now what it was that you needed when you were younger. But the day you understand that you possess the talent to be the next it, that's yeah. when we can arrive. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's up? Well, you know, you know what has to happen. So as you know yeah. I need 16 in that thing. Wait. Well, not yet, not yet. I'm not ready for a 16 yet. Yeah. Oh, you saying a 16 and? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah, I need a 16. Oh, send, that's... Me, send me the track with 16 bars. I mean, it might right. come back with 2436 because you know. I or, or, I I might, or I might, or I might, or I might just need you on one of them hook bangers because you know your hook bangers be official too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we might need you. Uh, all right, we do, we do, we do, we do. Where Porsche um, at? She's coming. Yo, my lips super dry, y'all. Keep it 100. Don't lie right now, mm -hmm. for real. Keep it all the way G. <laughs> all right. Like, just I'm say not it. I'm messing with you. Just <laughs> say it. If it's super nah, dry, good. say it's dry, and then I'm going I'm to work you on it. You all right, man. Don't show. worry about it. You got tea. Hey, JL, bring me that Vaseline, JL. <laughs> no, you don't need no Vaseline. You got the tea, dog. <laughs> he said, bring me the Vaseline. Bring me that the Vaseline. Vaseline. Welcome once again to another episode of the Solution Based Community Podcast. This is the Get Together. I'm your man, K I N G King. And with me, as always, is my brother, the Elder Herb. What's good, bro? Everything good, man. Everything good, you know. All right. Holy now, shit, but I'll be all right. Yeah, yeah. Did you get a nap in today? <laughs> Hell no. Bro, not at all. <laughs> I, got a two hour, I got a two hour nap in today. I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm mad at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two hours. I'm upset. Two <laughs> hours. <laughs> it was lovely. Now, look. Uh, the brown girl is on vacation and taking care of some amazing business that she will share with us when she gets back. But in the meantime, we have a very special co-host to help us uh, keep ourselves in line. Yes, sir. Please welcome Dana Betts to the squad. What up, Queen? Dana, what's up, Rick? What's up, what's up? How are what's you guys doing? What's going on, Dana? All right. Living the dream. That's right. Welcome, welcome. And thank you for being here. Now, today's episode is for the love of money. We are talking all about employment in the community, underemployment, underpaid, under-resourced, even undereducated. And to get into that, we got some heavy hitters from the community. First up, a sure. friend of the show, Sharice is back in the building. What up, Miss Black Greatness? What's what up? up? <laughs> what up, sis? What's hey. Up? All right, next up, this community member, one of our favorites, my girl Portia is back. What up, Portia? Portia, where you at? How you doing? What up, girl? Okay, hey, hey. <laughs> And finally, <laughs> and finally uh, yeah. this, uh, this community member is back again with, I'm sure, a wealth of experience to share. My brother, Andrew Steezo Banks, is in the building. What up, Steez? Hey, what, what, what up, what up, Shalom? What up, music at? What's oh, up? Yeah, don't, don't make me do it again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, had you, I, I had him coming into the rock last time. Don't make me do it again. <laughs> do you smell it? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, just a reminder that you can catch this in every episode of the Solution Based Community Podcast on our new website, www.solutionbasedcommunity.com. Log on and check out all of the content, all of the videos, or hit the links and tune in on your favorite podcast platform. Elder Hurt. Yes, sir. Is it all about the love of money? <laughs> Is that you know what, what, man? You know what? I, I don't I don't know. Not sure if if the money really deserve our love, man. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I I was always told never love nothing that can't love you back. The thing is, is man, is that it's it's a necessity. Like the, mm. the, the bread is necessity. Like you need the money for for life. Mm. So what do you do in these circumstances? Who the fuck knows? You know what I'm saying? But I'm just, you know, I'm fortunate to 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 be in a position to where I could, you know, budget correctly and periodically 
drink some name brand coffee. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. But uh, but you know, research actually researching this this topic. We got some facts here, man. And, and number one facts is the number one fact that I was looking at right here is that African Americans are un unemployed at two times the rate of white people. Mm. Again, African Americans unemployed at two times the rate of white people. Wow. Now this ain't a black or white thing. I mean, for those who may be tuning in and and oh, something has to happen here. Now, something, something <laughs> do gotta happen here. Something gotta happen here. We gotta actually shine a light on this particular situation. Now, you you um you came in with the intro, and the intro was very extremely informative from the door. Like if you're looking at if if we want to talk about facts, you talked about underemployed. Mm -hmm. You talk about underserved. You talk about undereducated. You know what I mean? It, it ain't it, we it ain't but so many goddamn unders. You get the underwear. You know what, <laughs> what the fuck you gonna say? Like how many? You know what I'm saying? Is under is under. So how do we get to the point where we are represented? You know what I mean? In a better fashion. You know what? I'm not even focused on being equal. You know what I mean? I'm not even focused on being equal. I just want them. I, I, on some real shit, I want, I, I just want to step above where we are right now. Mm. I want to step above where we are right now. We can work from, we can work with that and, and, and deal with the other shit later. Yeah, that's real. So, thanks. I would like to, I would like to talk about initially, just talk about, you know, the things we've seen and the, and the things we've uh, we've experienced in our lives when it come to when it came to employment. You know, what I mean, I'm I'm from a background where like I I remember I remember on on one of the episodes I forget what episode it was, King, but I mentioned that I I was married to my high school sweetheart. And I said I was only married to my high school sweetheart because I got a GED at 34. Right. You know what I mean? And so that I'm actually married to my high school. I had to put that together. Like what just yeah, happened right yeah, there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, oh, so what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that I was I did okay. I mean, of course, we you know, we purchased our first home. You know, without me having a GED, but at the same time, you know, my lane was li really limited. So if mm -hmm. I wasn't getting money in that one lane, it was like, uh oh, right, you right. go to drought. You right. know what I mean? Back to the block. Right. So I understand what it feel like to be pigeonholed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I understand what it it, it feel like to be quote unquote one dimensional or to lack, you know this abundance of skill you understand and in our community we have a bunch of people like that now that that one dimensional person may run circles around you in that dimension we mm -hmm. talked about it other in other episodes how jokers could fix your car with a goddamn screwdriver you know what i'm saying yeah. so do some unimaginable shit but the thing is is that we need a shot Right. So with that being said, uh, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna allow our beautiful host, not co-host, our beautiful host to go ahead and kick off our first question. All right. Hold on, let me pull it up here. But you know what, as I'm pulling it up, you made such a good point about, you know. You said you mentioned like going back to the block. I feel like a lot of our youth, especially, they finally, they kind of get to a point where they're like, I'm either going to go to school or I'm going to get money in any way that I can. And unfortunately, there's no, they don't have the resources or the connections to make it to school. 
And that's not just because they grew up in the hood, but because sometimes their parents make too much money to get financial aid, but not enough to put them through school. Mm, and so they're sex. like, well, I got to make money somehow. Yep. And unfortunately, they go to the block, they get in trouble. One time, that's all you need is one time for an employer to look at your resume and be like, that's you know it. what? Not going to happen. So you made up a good point. I mean, it's like this, it's like so much that's involved in this. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So first question is, are you employed? And what do you do? And was it your childhood dream to do what you're doing for a living? Okay. Hmm. I'll start it. So I'm in the uh-huh. military. I did not. If you would have asked me when I was younger, I was like, I would never join the military. Ever. Mm-hmm. Ever. I, I was like, no. Same thing. I they said, no, ma'am. No, sir, no, ma'am. I'm not getting yelled at. And then in 2014, I was getting yelled at. <laughs> uh, was it my dream? Not at all. But I needed to finish college. Mm. Because growing up in the house I grew up in, there's so much emphasis on that degree. You've got to get your degree to be successful. There's so much that like that piece of paper is, is equivalent to success. And it's not because I'm right. still in the military and I still got the degree. I don't even know where it's at it's somewhere, but I got it. I don't use it. Uh, was it my childhood dream? No, but I'm doing it and I actually do love it. So I'm, I'm blessed to be able to say that, but it was not nothing, nothing that I planned to do. No. no. <laughs> I wanted to no. be a baseball player when I was a kid. Mm. I was nice. Mm. I was real good. You know, uh, but you look like you wasn't good the way you said it. Like, you know how people be like, they 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 like, yo, I could have been in the NBA, but the way you say it, the way you said it, yeah, that confidence is like, now we got to go play just to like, kind of, oh, nah. I played. I, re- I remember going to high school in my freshman year, and uh, the coaches like, they they pay me no mind, they didn't know who I was, mm. you know, because I didn't play Babe Ruth ball. I didn't go through the ranks like everybody else's did, you know, with all the all the kids with the the coaches and the extra stuff going on. I just came out there with, you know, what I mean, with the talent. The, the person that taught me how to play baseball was in a wheelchair. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He was in a wheelchair and, and he, he was my coach and he taught me how to hit and how to do all this stuff. He taught me how to run. Man in a wheelchair taught me how to run bases. Think wow. about that. That's crazy, right? But when I got up there and I started smacking these balls and they over there just checking names off the list. And then they hear this ball keep going. And they like, yo, who was hitting this? Mm. And then they see me and they're like, what's his name? Henry. And then they was like, do the, do the thing. So we did the <laughs> thing. And then I did my thing again. And it still right. went that way. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. So, but after that, honestly, man, I, I, I believe um, that my lack of, once again, the, the direction of not having a father in that house, the way that, you know, or somebody that was going to guide me as a father, uh, that was not in the house. So there was a lot of things that just kind of went away. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like I faded on the homework. I, I faded on doing this and that, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I got into rapping at the lunch tables and all that. And then next thing you know, it come to girls, you know what I'm saying? I start dropping a few pounds in there. Now it's like, ah, well, you know, now it's like, what's up time? I'm going to be cool and all that. You know, I don't want to do it all that right there. Mm. You know, so then I got into the rap scene and next thing you know, that was it. Now I want to be a rap star for my life. You know what I'm saying? But once again, I dealt with a situation where we talked about it before on the validation episode. There was no direction. That was a dream that was unattainable to most people in their minds. So nobody gave me any direction or any uh, guidance or any, even any uh, encouragement to go after what it was that I wanted or a plan. There was no plan, even though there was a plan for every type of success in this world. They gave me no plan, but they sure did want to give me a plan if I wanted to be a doctor or something. Right. I didn't want that. you know. So right now I am employed. I've been employed. This will be uh, 15 years I'm employed as a... Uh, uh, I'm in the optical field, you know, so I'm a licensed optician and I've been in the optical field for 15 years and I fell into it on accident just by needing a job. I left, uh, I left the store, uh, wanting to do something else. And then when I decided to get married a long time ago, I said, I need more money. So I went back and a position in optical was open for just management. And I went in as management and then eventually I liked it, worked my way, uh, into getting my license and, I tell you what, I love my job. Hmm. I get to help people. I get to use my hands. I get to use my ingenuity. I get to use my people skills. You know, and I get to leave my job at my job when I go home. And I make a great, I make a great wage. So. 
I can't complain. But this is not what I wanted to do. However, now that I think about it, what you really wanted to do was, you know, be happy. Yeah. I'm pretty happy. There you go. What about you, Sharice? <sighs> I'm definitely not doing what I thought I was going to do as a child. Um, growing up, it was you couldn't dream for yourself. You were kind of told what you were going to be. Um, if you're going to be successful, if we're going to pay for you to go to school, then you need to go to school to be a lawyer or be a doctor. Um, they didn't pay for me to go to school. I had to pay my way through school. For me, I knew I wanted to help people, but I didn't know in what capacity. Um, I am 46 and I've been employed for 32 years. Um, I was an employee for 31 years. Um, out of that 31 years, I have had my own businesses here and there. And for the last 12 months, I have been an employer um, with my own company full time with my own set of employees. So I'm actually doing what I think I wanted to do as a child, which is really help people, educate people, um, help people build and create generational wealth, help people change their mindset, help people understand that whatever they want to accomplish in life, you know, they have the ability to do it. Um, I think COVID has taught us all something. We all say that change is impossible. <laughs> well, COVID has showed us that it's not impossible. Um, when you're forced to change, it's going to happen. Right. And we have the ability to where it doesn't have to be a forced thing. One thing that I did see growing up was there were a lot of entrepreneurs in my family, but they did not, they didn't instill entrepreneurship in us. It was still go to school, get an education, get a job so that you can just be over broke. That's it. It wasn't about, we wasn't taught those basics of credit or financials of, you know, having right. own and what you can do for there. But I always knew that there had to be more. Um, and I'm living in that more now and I'm helping people understand and embrace that as well. So I'm living in my dream of what mm. it is, the mortgage industry, um, well, mortgage and real estate industry. I'm in the credit industry I'm in the financial industry. I'm a certified builder. Um, mm. I'm a licensed mortgage loan originator. Mm. I'm a real estate agent. I'm a board certified credit consultant. Man, you a lot of shit. Okay. How the hell you just okay. do all that shit? Better run Yo. that down. Yo. That's a lot of shit right you there. Better because run it down. She worked hard to get it. The one thing I learned from you, Herb, a couple of years ago when you oh, were- ain't learned shit from me. I can't yes, when you were teach born, anybody nothing. You talked about the importance. You can't go and try to help someone. Yes, you can have your experiences, but you also need your degrees and your certifications and your different things to open certain doors that your experience will not open. And for me, even though I work in this field, it's important for me that I want to have the licenses. I want to have the certifications. I want to have the degrees and the knowledge. Why? Because I want to be able to open bigger doors that other people may have that's going to be able to help my community and people that look like me that don't have the ability to walk through those doors because they don't have a certification and degree. So I'll go get them. That, that, is, that is a very, that is a very important um that's it. That's an important thing for us, and it's a, it, it's. Uh, I mean, to us as individuals, and mm -hmm. us as a community. So we we greatly appreciate that. I, I want to ask. I want to ask the sister Portia. You y'all good out there? <laughs> yeah, you we're the, good. You got the, all right. All right. I thought the Wi-Fi because you know you only went out there with that shit. But go ahead. Oh my God. <laughs> oh no. Okay. So um. I am not doing what I thought I was going to be doing growing up. Um, I wanted to be a doctor growing up. Um, you know, every little kid's dream, right? I wanted to be a doctor and a lawyer, and I was going to be both, right? And you couldn't tell me nothing. <laughs> then I switched to they engineering, actually need that. right? And then you, then I switched to engineering, right? So my whole high school career, even when I met Matt King, I wanted to do engineering. Then I switched, and I said, you know what? Forget all that. I'm going to be a business. I grew up around business owners. Um, you know, my grandfather had a business the whole time I was growing up. 
And I was like, you know what? I want to work on my own for myself, right? So I went in ahead and I was like, well, I'm going to go do business. It took me 13 years to get my degree. And I finally got my bachelor's degree and I got it in business analytics and strategic communication. That's for sure. I can't and spell all that. So, <laughs> but I also had associates in between there. I had associates in hotel restaurant management. So hospitality, working in hotels was always my fallback. You know, that that is my second job. That was always my fallback, no matter what. Um, I was actually a supervisor over at the Tropicana for a while, while I was still back on the East Coast. Um, but now I work for um, the public school system out here and I'm a future specialist. So basically what I do is I work with our non-traditional high school students. So most of my kids are from 16 and 20, right? Or about to be 21. Um, and they are, a lot of them are non are like those fifth year seniors um, who did not get all their credits that they needed during their first four years, four years of school for whatever reason. And so I help with them, help them figure out what are they going to do not once they graduate, you know? how you know I, I i and i'm very hands-on and one-on-one um with my students so if one person wants to do construction and the other wants to do real estate i have actually working with two students right now that want to do both i work with them on figuring out what they need to do you know how to get there helping them plan their plan you know be it doing career tours college tours helping them with the fafsa you know, getting them the chance to talk to other people in that field and different things like that. So I put all that together and I work with these students to try to help them figure out what they want to do and to, uh, and to build a better path. Because most of my kids, you know, they come from low income families. They come from first generation, they'll be where they'll be the first generation college, high school graduate, forget college graduate, you know, some are single parents and, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of smiling and cringing at the same time. <laughs> no, this is this is real talk because the community and Stizo smiling because Stizo know what I'm talking about. The community that I'm from is like that shit is unheard of. Yeah, like the shit that you and Sharice just said. Like, yeah, it kind of it kind of made me smile and piss me <laughs> off at the same time. <laughs> So no, no, no. With that being said, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna explain why in it, in, in in its totality for real. Um, but what I what I what I do want to do is is get is get um my man Steve's in here, and then we going we gonna have this conversation definitely. Mm-hmm. Steve, what is it that you do? Um, was it your dream? Um, nah, it wasn't my dream to be like an entrepreneur the way I am. But at some point in my life, even while I was working, I knew I was never going to work for anybody again. I knew it was going to come a point where I was just like, it's just not going to happen. Like, like that fed up shit. You know what I'm saying? But when I was young, <laughs> I heard a lot. Like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed. I don't have no type of influence, like anything that y'all been talking about the whole time. Like nobody ever offered no college, never had nothing on the table. I went to BCS in high school. So it was like, I didn't really have all of the extra that everybody else had. So I'm, I just be impressed hearing other people say the stuff y'all saying. Facts. And then when, when you say looking up to certain people, having that guidance, you know what I'm saying? Like I kind of do what all my cousins and them was doing was selling drugs. So they was hustling, but I'm hustling. I'm just hustling something legal. You know what I'm saying? But it's just, so maybe I kind of took from them a little bit, but it definitely wasn't no father around to tell me like, do this or don't do that. So I just, I by no means that I think I was going to be doing what I'm doing right now. You know what I mean? So maybe when I got older, early twenties, I that's when I was like, okay, I got to get to the business. Actually, when I started running with King a lot more yeah. around that time, yeah. when I was like fresh out of, you know, the foster home or whatever, that's when my entrepreneurial mind started right around then my last yeah. two years of high school. And then I really, really, really started kicking it with King like crazy around then. You he know what I mean? was there like, when I built the studio. So, mm-hmm. so right there, yeah, I'm going to tell you, man, am I doing what I want to do, what I wanted to do as a kid? Hell no, man. <laughs> I wanted to, and, and, and this, this may throw a lot of people for a loop. I actually wanted to be an artist. Mm. I wanted to be a painter. I wanted to be, I wanted to be a sculptor. I wanted to be an artist. 
That's kind of in dope. all form. In, in <laughs> like, all forms, for real, for real. even say yeah. that is kind of dope. Like you know what I mean? in, in all forms, the thing is, is that <laughs> my my hood wasn't Mm-mm. wasn't accepting that. No, it was, sir. that shit was a no no. No sir. So what I what I do now for a living? Nah, I didn't. That wasn't. It wasn't my dream. But what I do now for a living is I just try to help the little me's out. And help them, and help them pursue their dream. Mm-hmm. So, I know I can't. I, I I can't. You know, I ain't gonna say I can't, but I know that I'm less likely to go ahead and and, and reach that that max potential of what I wanted to do as a, as a youngin. So I just go ahead and, and and put my best foot forward to to try to make somebody else' dream come true. There, 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 as we talk, you know what I mean? Today we'll talk. And I'm going to tell you, man, there's a ton of setbacks that I have. You know what I mean? There's a ton of contributor factors that I have, a ton of barriers that I have to, you know, to get to where I want to get to. And this, this is my dream. My dream is, is, is to make somebody else's dream come true. Yeah, I can respect that. You know what I mean? Now as the elder... You know what I mean? I, I could sit back and, and and watch somebody else, you know, smile and, and, and smile off of that. So that's why I said what I said when when Portia and, and, and Sharif was talking. This it was like, yo, like that shit is that's a lot of shit. Yeah, well, you know what I mean? Not. And at the same time, <laughs> like, I was never exposed to that. I'm on some upset shit, like slash happy as a motherfucker shit for the community to have, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Some people with this type of insight. So before we before we even get to the second question, you know what I mean? I would I would like to know how does it how does it feel? How does it feel to be where you are right at this second? Like I know I know for me, I would love to be I would love to be in a different lane. And not in in it. My dream ain't even for me no more. My dream is for for others. My dream is for us. So I would definitely love to be in a different lane, so we can be in a different lane. You know what I'm saying? So how does it feel right now? You know what I mean? How does it feel right now? Anybody could chime in on that. I think I want to chime into that real fast. So for me. I think I found my, well, not, I think, I know I found my passion, right? A lot of the things that I wanted to do, everything for me was about money at first. How can I make money to live the lifestyle that I want to live, right? Yeah. <laughs> but as I was going through all of that, I, I kept feeling like I'm not happy. I got bored really, really easy at jobs. I switched jobs a lot. Um, and I, I needed, and everybody kept telling me, unfortunately, when you find your passion, right? And it, it was. I found my passion working with the youth, right? At first, I, my last job I was working, I was still working with the youth, but I was working with 9th and 10th graders. And I loved it, right? But I, now I get to be a little more hands-on and I'll help them with their direction even more at this point in this new job that I took. And, you know, yes, the money started to come with it. At first, working for a nonprofit, I wasn't getting nothing. But <laughs> the job I have now, I'm making enough to to live comfortably mm. and to be happy. I actually like to get up and go to work. I love when I get to meet with one of the kids, be it virtually or be it in face to face, and mm. just find out what their story is and how I can help them. You know, sure. and helping others to me is like that's where my passion is, and so I'm happy right now. You know, there's still more I want to do. You know, there's other things I want to do, but right now I'm in a place where I can say I am. I'm not going to say content, but I'm happy doing what I'm doing. You sure. know, I feel like as long as I'm I'm making a difference in somebody else's life, I'm helping them be better than I was and not make those same mistakes I made. You know, okay. so I'm, I'm, I'm trying at least. I'm trying to help them do that. And so for me, I'm happy right now. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I really can say I'm happy. Sure. Sure. Anybody else want to chime in on that? You know, I would, um, I would say for me, even though this wasn't my <laughs> dream job, I really didn't know what my dream job was growing up. We All I knew was I had to go to school. Um, but I think the best thing about my situation in my life right now is that 
I'm stable and I have money in the bank and I could do that. I could try, I could get up and move to London if I wanted to. And I wouldn't, it wouldn't I need bother me at all. I need the whole $20. I just need like $20 <laughs> for real. Right. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I'm for me, cash app up. Matter of fact, she said 30. <laughs> now I want $30, but go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. For me, because of how I grew up, and um, I'm going to be like a transparent hour with you guys. Like my mom was on drugs real bad growing up. So like stability, extra money, new clothes, that was not happening. Mm. So as, a, as an adult now that I could do those things and I could have, buy my own clothes and I can go to my cousins or, you know, my nieces and nephews who, you know, their parents are single parents with multiple kids who are struggling. I could break them off of something or buy them school clothes. Last year, I sponsored a, a, a family for Christmas. Stuff like that, because I have that ability to do that. Even though I'm not working in my passion, like I'm happy. I'm and I'm, I'm gotcha. like I'm a, a what is the word? Eluded. I don't know. Can you help me out? What's when you're really healthy? When you're really happy? Hey, <laughs> yeah. elated. 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 Yeah. Thank you. I'm sick. elated. I, I know a motherfucker would know that shit. <laughs> it's too many intelligent Negroes on here like for us not to know that shit. <laughs> I wasn't going, you know, I wasn't going to help you with that shit. Oh, no, yeah, I was going to be the last one to help you with that shit. You see, I said king. I know. I know. It. Yeah. I know it. You, you got the right one. You got the right one, baby. I, you know it. I you know this man. <laughs> so, you know, for me, you know, I'm not working in my passion. I actually just discovered what my passion was this year. And it's writing. And I never would have thought, no, not if COVID didn't happen. So COVID gotcha. forced me to sit down for a minute and be like, what makes me happy? Because working from home, like, yeah, it's fine. But I was losing my mind. And I discovered my passion was writing. So now going forward, I'm like, all right, I got money to, I actually have the money now to support my passion, which for me is just win-win, hand in hand. Can I just make this, I just want to make one point real quick. When you listen to these, to the stories that actually Herb, Elder Herb, Portia, and now Dana has all said, if you really break those down, you can extrapolate one thing from these. And come on with it... the shit. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at her immediately. What I'm... Yo. Come on. Come on. Cause you cause I was I was with you till you did that shit, man. <laughs> no, I really was. I was with yo, that's the thing. If you ever you ever like you know what uh, I mean? That's like that's man. you know what that's equivalent to to what Brown Girl said she threw up on that man John. You know what I mean? I That's a quick because I was up here. I was up here. And then the motherfucker say, drop a late. You just right. drop. That's just All right, go ahead, man. Go ahead with that shit. Go ahead. Extrapolate to estimate or conclude by extending the application of a method. Go ahead. go ahead, man. When you pull the information from these things that y'all have all said, one thing has been. That sounds better. One thing has been in common is that all of you in one way are now what it was that you needed when you were younger. Mm. Did you realize that? Okay. Come through with the word. You know a motherfucker mm. say something smart and say, mm. Mm. <laughs> and it's always the it's always the it new nigga too. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> the guest. Yeah, yeah. And you look and the lips go like this. And the lips go like mm. I mean you, you now that's real talk. That's real. It talk. was. When you think about it, you know, Elder, when I was talking, when when you were talking, we were back on the role model episode with Stizo, and you mm. were talking about um uh what you were doing with these young kids coming in that they were talking about they wanted to be artists right, right, right. and they couldn't do that right mm-hmm. but you wanted to be an artist too so what you yeah. do now part of your thing is showing them that they can do that then you got Portia coming mm-hmm. over here talking about she didn't know what it was she wanted to do and now what she does is she finds she helps people find what it is they want to do and how mm-hmm. to do it and then you Most talk about, and then you talk about Dana you know, with all these things that she said she didn't have because of the past with her uh, with her mother, mm-hmm. but now she's got the ability to go out and sponsor somebody who didn't have those same things that she didn't have. Right. You know. I tell you what. I I, I tell you what. That was a good. That was a real good one. That was a that was a real. Except with this strap. Yeah, it was a perfect summation for everything. Yeah. You got somebody oh, else with your stupid ass shit. Oh, Did you shit. text her that <laughs> dumb ass shit? Summation, the process of summing things up. I did not, but that was hey, you that sound like you text us some stuff, <laughs> stupid ass shit like that. No, no. Nah, you read it one of them, them, them damn things. 
But anyway, I have a pretty huge vocabulary too. I just I don't know right. what the hell that mean, but I'm gonna tell you like this. <laughs> On some real shit that that really brings things that really think brings things home. You know what I mean? And I would tell you like this. Those 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 um all right, like King came on said, I, I uh, optical feel, and I'm a, I, I do the optic. I didn't mean to, you know, do it with my picky up and shit. Said like that, but I meant like he said that shit, and it's like, you know, as a young boy, I'm go. I went back, I went back, and I said, yo, fuck is that? You know what I mean? Like when you when you somebody, of course I know what the optical feel mean. It's you know it's the you know eyes and working with eyes and glasses, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Huh? Correct. So, so the thing is, is that it's like, all right, you know, anything outside of my three block radius and everybody that does what they do in this three blocks, I'm going to tell you, you're going to get a lot of rappers. You're going to get a lot of barbers. You're going to get a lot of uh, 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 trappers. You know what I mean? You're going to get a whole lot of things that uh, you're going to get truck drivers. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get a lot of these things where you like, damn, man, that's really what you want to do. And the thing is, is that they psych themselves out. And it's, it's people out there that really want to do it for a living. But the majority of us may psych ourselves out and say, yo, this is really what I want to do. And, and truth be told, this is what we're exposed to. Right. Now, I understand we got we got this modern day shit that, yeah, you got the Internet, you got this, you got that, whatever. But once a real shit, when you watching that joker next door, got his boots to the ground, you know what I'm saying? That's more of an influence to you than a motherfucker on on the Internet. You know what I'm saying? That's more of a, a of a reality to you than a motherfucker on the Internet. Now, the thing is, is that struggle come about. Now, I know for a fact, you know, as as a career man and as, you know, listening to you guys as career people, right? We ain't just pop up in this fucking career. Right. No. I remember going from Starbucks to straight, like, welfare coffee. And I don't even, you know, I ain't hating on the welfare car because I still drink that shit. But I'm talking about, you know what I mean? And uh, nah, I just posted up where this by I just posted up online how I had the hot dogs and and, and, and uh and the and the beans and shit just going. You know what I mean? We still got no- oodles and noodles and shit, so don't get it fucked up. I know yeah. how to go back to the hood. Yeah. But listen, I went from drinking good coffee to back to the bullshit, you know what I'm saying, real quick. I learned how to budget. Like I had to humble myself with, you know, the wife pat me on my back, telling my everything is good. We we got it this month, type of shit. You know what I mean? In order right, to pursue right. this particular, you know what I mean, lane. Right, right. So I'm gonna ask, have we ever struggled or knew somebody who struggled in our quest? for for this 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 you know absolutely yeah absolutely it's a struggle right now yeah you know what i'm saying it's a struggle right now like this is all i do you feel me like other i mean it's i got small so you know i mean other sources of income but at Mm -hmm. the same time like this is the bread runner like if a store tell me they not getting no orders this week or you know what i'm saying like a couple stores like yo we want no orders or I'm, i'm not getting any online sales you feel me like how we going to put on this or put that on or buy this or buy that? What's You know what I mean? Who's going to Chick-fil-A for the the 30 piece with the macaroni and cheese? You feel me? Like, mm-hmm. so that's what I look at. But you know what I mean? We, when you got a good support system, you got a good team around you, you feel me? Like the the outcome is always going to be a positive. You feel me? Is is when the egos be involved in your, your relationships, not just your boyfriend, girlfriend, wife or that, but like your relationships, whoever is around you is considered your support system. But when those egos get involved, you always going to quote unquote struggle. But it's it's yeah. for entrepreneurs always going to be real. I don't care. What no, I done been around a lot of them. Even the ones that sitting on all that bread, they invested in certain now they ways. Struggling. 
<clears throat> right, but they just struggle on their level. So I yeah, mean, I'll be the level, first yeah. to say right. like it's a struggle now because I don't go to see. I'm used to being an entrepreneur, going to work every day, getting sixty thousand a year, doing that type of shit as a salesman. You feel me? But when you get fired from your salesman job and you like my life purpose was to be my own business owner anyway. You know, you gotta you gotta thank God for the for giving you what you prayed for, even though you got to struggle in that moment. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like you prayed right. to, to have your own situation. You prayed on it. You cried about it. And I'm, no, I'm telling you, I prayed on it. I cried about it. I done sat on my knees, you know what I mean? Next to the couch, not sure. even, not even a religious man, but doing that spiritual thing. Like, yo, what am I doing? Which way am I going? You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like within the past two, three, four years, I'm talking about, and I'm yeah. 39. So I'm not talking about at 15, 16, I'm talking about like right now, I'm in that moment, bro. Yeah. But I will tell you, cause I didn't answer your last question. Yo, I am ecstatic yeah. about where I'm at right now, yo. Mm. Like I've never been more excited about being involved or being a part of something like I am with New Life and We Stay Busy Photography and We Empire. Like you don't even understand, like it really recreated like the whole me in a sense, like all that I thought I had to be has been washed away, bro. Like, it's so crazy when you like- when say, that say that again, say that again. Like, for oh. real, like, officially washed away. That old me, like, this, the new present state that I'm in has officially washed away the old me. And it's crazy because y'all gonna still see the resemblance of me. Like, oh, that's these, that's these, that's these. But <laughs> these conversations different, bro. Like, I'm talking next level stocks, Forex. I'm talking next level conversations, bro. I'm not even talking about, like, I keep liquor on the wall and don't have a conversation about it. I'm not talking about no bud, no smoking. We ain't talking about no comp. I've been in Atlanta six months, haven't seen a club yet, bro. I drive by like, damn, that shit look lit. You feel me? Like, like the whole me is so brand new. It's crazy. I love it, yo. I I could not ask for a better position to be in. If this is what struggling feel like when you doing it for your goddamn self, I should have been struggling 30 years ago, straight up. Mm, Right. Straight up. So I I tell you, like I said, I'll lead off and say, yeah, I'm in that moment, but it's a beautiful moment, man. It really is. Like I, I'll explain it to you guys another day, but it's a beautiful moment I'm in. I promise you. A lot of us don't like. I mean, I don't want to say I don't want to say rock bottom. You know what I mean? But I remember a time where, um, man, I I I, I remember. I mean, I can tell you stories for days, man. Where you know it was fucked up. I'm talking about as a young man, as a growing man, and as an adult, you know what I mean? Where 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 shit is fucked up. I'm talking about, you know, when when I'm talking about making it work, like like really whipping it up, like making a fucking meal, like taking this, yeah. you know what I mean, this scrap and that scrap and putting it together and making it happen and right. still having that dream, and that vision to put it together. Like I, I I was at a point as a grown man, you know what I mean? And I'm looking at I'm looking at the wife, you know, I, I, we're not looking at the wife, but I'm helping, you know what I mean, sitting there helping the wife, you know what I mean, get to where, you know, she get to, and my wife is mad focused. Mm-hmm. And it's like, all right, well, fuck you gonna be at in a minute, dog. Yeah, I remember one time I was reaching so hard, right, for success. And I was I was actually I was actually smiling at myself because I, I did make some some dollars, you know what I mean, out there doing what I did, and I did make a lot of things happen, but at the same time, I wasn't fucking happy, man. Right. I was scratching and trying to reach for success, trying to trying to impress my wife. And, and my wife is like, yo, motherfucker, you impress me if you smile. Right. Mm. If you be happy for a minute. Mm. Yeah, if you be happy with a fucking McDonald's job, I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Mm. You, yo, in this lane, man, in this lane, it's so, it's, I played catch up for a long time, man. And I, I can truly say I finally arrived to the point where I'm comfortable. The thing is, is that we the solution based community. So we, you know, I don't want to come on and just, you know, and have a conversation about, you know, I pick you up at the coffee table smoking $30 cigars and shit like that on some real shit. 
I would like to, because I would have loved, I would have loved, you know, to have a conversation with a joker 20 years ago about how to get to this point. Mm, right. Because I probably would have been here 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I just, I, I, I want our community to understand that we understand. I want our community to understand that we had, you know, we not just all the way there and, and, and it's just like, oh yeah, it's just, just, just cross the T and dot the I like motherfucker. How you do that shit? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, dog, I remember fella, yo, I, I'm telling you, I remember failing the GED test. Mm, sound like me. <laughs> and looking, wait a minute, and looking, and looking, wait a minute. I remember failing the GED test and looking at my doctor wife. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say this shit one more time. I remember failing the GED test and looking my doctor wife in the face. I remember failing the state board exam for my, my licensure and looking my doctor wife in the face. Mm. I remember when it was time to pay the mortgage. And letting her know, like, yo. Shit ain't, you know, mm. ain't gonna go down like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, man. You know what I remember, bro? I remember me and you graduated at the same time. <laughs> you remember that? Real talk. I wish I could bring the picture up, dog. Me and this dude randomly out of nowhere didn't even know. Both went through uh went through college to get our, you know what I mean, to get our our you know our degrees or certificates or whatever to to go into the fields that we were in to be able to make the money that we're making. Didn't know he was there. He didn't know I was there. Mm. We just happened to pop up knowing each other for years. We live right around each other. Right. And I see him with his cap and gown on, and I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> That's crazy. And we took a big, big picture. We took picture a big, too. crazy picture together. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. You know. Hey, King. Hey, King. I, I, my, my, um, all right. Kevin Hart, best friend, Spank, right? I scraped up money to get this joker over to a spot in Cicleville. Mm. I hustled, hustled, hustled so hard. You know what I mean? And then the forecast fucked it up, right? Uh, Lights got cut off. Dang. So what I'm what I'm saying is like I mean that ain't just these 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 stories ain't even the worst stories. The thing is, is that we a solution based community, man. I need I need I need us to really let these motherfuckers know, like we ain't just wake up and it was you know nah it was real because not at all you know it's people out here, man. COVID nineteen has fucked a lot of people up. COVID nineteen opened up doors for me. I, yeah. I on some real shit. I showed them what hood looked like when COVID nineteen came. I said, "All right, take this, take that, put that on there, flip that, twist that on here, and and get the fuck out of here. I got this." Right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? And and it opened the doors up for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And people don't know that you know this 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 lane like this employability lane is for us. Right. That that lane is straight up for us. Our talents have put us in that in that in that yeah. position. Go ahead, Portia. What you talking about? Say, just kind of based off of what you were saying, you know, 
those who sometimes go through the hardest, those who have those real hardships, you know, I'm not even going to say just the hardest, but those who have those hardships and can make it through, they are the ones who can persevere through anything and can make it to the places they need to be in order to be what they ought to be. You know, so like you said, like COVID, it showed you, and you started showing people how to run the hood because it's it, that's what gets us there. That's my that, land. That's what build us. That's our foundation. You know what I mean? Like that perseverance will get you through anything, but you got to persevere. You got to push through. You got to just keep it on, you know, because like you said, it ain't easy. It, hey, it hasn't been a, a road for everybody, an easy road either. You know, I'm a single mom with two kids. And I remember I was what, 27, right? I already had my associate's degree. I, like I said, I, I'm always had it easy where I can always get a job. Keeping a job was a different story. Either keeping it or leaving it was always something I was doing. <laughs> so I switched jobs a lot. But I remember I was like 27 years old. I had two kids and I was making less than $10 an hour. And I also, had, and I had an associate's degree at the time, right? People asked me, how did you wind up leaving and going to Nebraska? You know, and that was why. That wasn't the only reason, but that was a big part. You know, I'm barely making any move. You know, I have two kids I had to provide for. But I also knew I needed to continue and finish what I started. I needed to finish my degree. You know, yeah. I needed to get away from my comfort, my comfort areas. You know, we were discussing that earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, I was comfortable back home. I was in Jersey before I moved here. Family was there. So I always knew I had somewhere to go if I fell, if I fell short. You know, yeah. if that job if that job fell through or this place fell through, I always knew I had somewhere to go. So I moved away from everything any level of comfort and security that I had to be able to do what I had to do. Born and raised in New York, bed Crown Heights area. Like I had that perseverance. I had that fight in me, you know, and that's what got yeah, you me. That's, got me. That. that's what got me to the point where I'm at, you know, <laughs> so that, that, that hood in us, it, it can be, it can be used for as a strength, you know, and not I'll put that people. shit on my resume. I, I into it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Oh, facts. Thanks, this shit. Real talk, you know. Yeah, that's it, right on my resume. <laughs> you if you don't know, know now, to, you know. Gotta know how to write it, man. Being a parent, being all of it, it can all go on your resume. I literally went to school for two years, and and basically, and I put that on my resume as a job, right? Because it is, you know, those skills yeah. that you obtain, yeah. those life skills. You can use them. You just have to know how yeah. to use them. You got to be able to articulate it the right exactly. way. That's all. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to, uh, to, to be able to transfer those skills and know how to do that. You know, mm -hmm. you know, I tell you what, <clears throat> coming, coming from, you know, that, that, that world and shit. And, and, and when these, when these big ass words are broken down, I feel like I'm able to to teach it a little bit better mm -hmm. because once I get that understanding, you know what I mean? I always teach education and application. Like, and, you know, I, it's sad to say some of the colleagues don't even, you know what I'm saying? Some of the, the colleagues don't even know how to get out of, you know what I mean? That that zone to where, yo, you know, you talking to a client when you're talking all this clinical shit. Mm -hmm. You know, you talking to a motherfucker straight out the mud, but you talking about a a, a, a biopsychosocial assessment. They don't know what the fuck that is. Right. You know what I'm saying? So these these things, man, we get so caught up in these million dollar, you know what I'm saying? Whereas, and I ain't taking no shots at you, King, but I, <laughs> what I'm saying, like we get we get caught up in this, in this, in this vibe, you know what I mean? We forget the audience that we speak into sometimes. I'm not, and I definitely not talking about King because King, King's flavor adds a lot of the twist to this. I mean, shit, we wouldn't be where we are, you know what I mean? If it wasn't for the great King Brown girl and now Dana, you know what I mean? And the rest of the community here. So what I'm saying is we got to, we got to, we got to understand our audience. You know what I mean? We got to understand who's in front of us. And right now we in some trying times. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Sure. We in some fucked up times, man. Yo, you know, you know, you know, the average, the average, um, like the 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 average level of education in the inner city, right? The jobs that they they are they are quote unquote employable for the majority of the jobs that they are quote unquote empl- most employable for are either getting laid off, right, or they front line. Mm-hmm. Is either you get out the door or you get in the front line. So now at alarming rates, you know what I'm saying? We either putting ourselves in harm's way or putting ourselves in harm's way. So it ain't no in between for us. Right. This is a time to where we really need to, we really need to speak to the audience in front of us, like on some real shit. And when we came up, when we came up with this and we talked about it, we processed it, man. And me being somebody who, who, I mean, just like a lot of us got our boots to the ground every single day. I hear these stories, man. And people like, yo, I can't get this. I can't do that. You know, we, we lack in the resources, right? King? You said it when we came up. We lacking the resources. Yeah, lacking the resources. And- we under undereducated, mm-hmm. underemployed, underserviced. You know what I'm saying? But I, you know, but what I don't think though is, and this might be a, you know, a segue to the next one is I don't think that we're lacking in the skills, yes. right? You know, uh, yes. because I remember the reason, the entire reason that I am where I'm at right now was born out of struggle all right it was yeah. born out of a, a a hard time i was uh matter of fact me and steezo steez we was working at tgi fridays back in the day Woo. right those right? were the days those were the <laughs> days boy Woo, man yo right, anyway all right we went somewhere for a second anyway yeah somewhere so <laughs> i left i left over there to go get a management job at the spot across the street you remember that i do right the uh, it was a it was a private owned spot dope little restaurant i mean had some had some some like world-class chefs come out of there matter of fact yeah. one of the world-class chefs is on tv right now got his own book out be on dr Oz wow. and all that. you know what i'm saying uh but <clears throat> that place was owned by some dudes that just had their daddy's money that they was playing around with and they messed up the money and the mob came in and took over hmm. now i stayed there for a little while until it got real uncomfortable because <laughs> I actually, can you can you even talk about this right now? <laughs> all I'm gonna say is I accidentally did something the right way for for the head dude and ended up sitting next to him at the main table most of the time, mm. and that became uncomfortable because I was like, that's not where I want to be. Uh, right. So I'm gonna go ahead and go, and then they shut everything down, and I couldn't go back anyway. But at that point, I had amassed so much uh, so much skill that I was uh, overqualified for a lot of the things that I was trying to get into. So I couldn't find a job. I just needed to pay my little five, what was it, $500 rent that I had in that little spot, Steve? You know what I'm saying? You remember my little spot in it, like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That that little spot, I I was just trying to find something to pay that bread and I couldn't even get a job as a cart pusher. You know what I'm saying? I walked in to Walmart trying to get a job like unloading a truck and they looked at somebody looked at my resume and said, yo, what are you doing here? Right. I hate that shit. Like you don't no, no, this isn't for you, but I tell you what, I got something for you. I'm going to bring you on back here, but in three months we got a management joint starting. So we're going right. to put you in the management program. All right. I can't get you into that other position, but we got this other thing back here that you can chill with for a little bit. Can you do that? We got that. But I had no job. You know what I'm saying? I remember going to Acme and stealing food. Mm, true. Because I didn't have no bread. I didn't tell my family that. Yeah. Right. True. Because I they was know proud. now. Yeah, yeah, they know now. <laughs> they know now. <laughs> I was on some proud stuff back in the day trying to right. make them own. They want to say nothing to nobody. You know, right. but it was born out of that struggle. But these skills, we had the skills. We don't have the resources. And a lot of times, the people that we are trying to present ourselves to don't have the skill to see the skills in us because it looks different coming from us. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm that saying? That was dope. I like how you did that. 
<laughs> and let's I not like let's not that. just think of skills as like on the job experience. Yes, that's a skill, but like we have natural skills. Yeah. Like me naturally, I'm a quick learner. You show me something once, maybe twice, I'm a, I'm a subject matter expert on it. That's a skill, and a lot of people don't yeah, right. write that down on the resume. That is, if you're a people person, if you're charismatic, that's a skill because a lot of people are not that. There that's are true. some awkward. We gotta learn how to spell charismatic first. Yeah, <laughs> before we can use it. I, mean, that's yeah, I, gotta, we can use I it. gotta spell that shit, but go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. But I'm saying, like, so to have those skills on the job experience, that's great, and you that's that that writes well on the resume. But like, your resume can be everything, but that interview might be boring. You mm -hmm. might not translate into that interview, so that's you kind of gotta have both of those skills where that resume looks good and that interview's gotta be solid too. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have a 50 50 than a hundred and zero because the chances True. are, an employer is not gonna look at me like. On paper, she's great, but I'd rather right. talk yeah. to a wet bag of sand. Yeah. <laughs> that you happened to you saying? before? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it happened I'm to me. I tell you. I, and I, she said, and I'm charismatic. Look, and I'm, 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 a, I'm out here. I'm a people person. Resume is <laughs> not too fancy, though. Resume is not all that. But the interview, solid. Right. We, um, all right. We test on that. We test on the employability aspect, right? The thing is, is that, and, and I've been in this situation and I need, we're going to definitely need Sharice on this one, but I'd have been in a position where my life skills got in the way of my financial health, meaning that my lack of knowing what a dollar mean, mm, my you, lack of you. knowing how to budget, my lack of knowing how to spend, you know, when not to spend, you know, um, uh, I, as soon as I got out to, you know, certain areas, I, I thought that if I had McDonald's money, then that was McDonald's and, and Burger King every fucking day. You know what I'm saying? So has, uh, this is my question. Has your has your budgeting skills or your understanding of a dollar ever gotten in the way of your financial health? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I want to start that because it goes back to where I'm at now. I'm only as good as I am now because I've hit rock bottom. I've lost it all. I know what it's like to be homeless. And I'm talking about homeless living in a shelter when your family say, oh, because what you choose as a faith goes against what we believe. So pack your stuff and get out my house. Mm -hmm. College is on you. I know what it's like to literally not have anywhere to go, not a bed to sleep in, not a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out. So when I look at my life and where I'm at now at 46 years old, when I look at my home, it reminds me, I'm reminded of the struggle and what it took to get here. When I would make money, the people I would reach back out to to help because I didn't want anyone to feel what I felt growing up. I didn't mm -hmm. want people to have to reach out and ask people for help from people who were going to constantly throw up in their face and remind them what they did to them, which in our community, sadly, we become known for that, even in our own family. Mm -hmm. um, it's sticking with our families. My biological mother, who was strung out on drugs, who chose to give me away, and I developed a relationship with her. So even when I was making the money, I did not have money management. I didn't know the importance of credit. I didn't know the importance of savings and checkings and all of that. It was like, if I got it today and she needed or this person needed, I'm giving it, giving it, giving it. I didn't understand about profit first and paying myself first. I didn't understand the importance of making sure my bills, when I would get an apartment is paid, I would have a roof over my head, but I wouldn't have no light. I wouldn't have no food. I worked for Bank of America for over 20 years and I was making close to six figures. And I literally had no money. I had no, when my mom died, all of the money went to bury her. She had no insurance. I Whatever I ate at work from the coupons they gave us to give out to our employees for free meals in the cafeteria, that's what I ate for months because I didn't have lights in my house. I didn't have hot water in my house. I couldn't afford. The That's crazy. So when people look at you, a lot of times, the one thing I love about God and not to get spiritual, but sometimes God has a way of taking you and making you not look like what you're going through. When people hear my testimony, they're like, 
oh my God, I would have never known you were homeless. I would have never known you lived in a shelter. I would have never known you understand this type of struggle. Been there, done that. But I never looked like what I've been through. So I have a deeper appreciation for where I'm at now, what I have. But it also lets me understand because even though I lived in the big house with the family that adopted me, people didn't know the level of abuse that was going on mentally, being mm -hmm. told physically, but being told every day, you'll never be anything, you'll never amount to anything, that gets into your mental psyche. So when yeah. you get a good job, when you do meet the, the people that can put you on a certain pathway, when this has not changed, when you have never developed the right relationship with money and with finances and with generational wealth or understanding that you can change the trajectory of the legacy of your family, when that's not embedded in your mind, no matter how much money you make, you still broke. Mm -hmm. You still don't have anything. So after the last time of literally hitting rock bottom, um, after being with Bank of America for 21 years, um, then moving me from the East Coast out to Texas, no family out here in Dallas whatsoever, one biological sister in Houston from my biological mother, we had no relationship. The job ended. They're like, hey, we bought all these companies. Now we need to downsize. But I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to go do my own thing. But in doing my own thing, the money I got from my 401k, my pension, my retirement, all of that stuff, I'm like, oh, I'm going to throw this into my business. I'm going to start my business and all of that. I got all of these degrees, but they didn't prepare me with the, I had life skills, but I didn't have life business skills. Mm. Mm. Okay. I didn't understand how credit worked and the importance of my personal credit and business credit. I yeah. didn't understand yeah. about how to properly charge and how to position myself as an entrepreneur. So I was taking all of this money, thinking I was doing the right thing, putting it in my business, but mm -hmm. there's not enough coming back in. And I was hey, in a, the same position. Sheree, no. let me ask you this, right? Let me ask you this question, right? Because well, you said that, right? It made me think, like, I think I think we do, and, and, and this is combined with, I was thinking about what Dana said, along with what you said. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking cats in the hood do know about credit because on some real shit, we know about street credit. We, we just do. don't respect, we don't respect mm. the, 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 the other side. So, so... I need I I want I want to I want to expound on that you know what I mean because we know about street credit I know I better pay such and such back because of this this and that you know what I'm saying but 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 fuck that like Bill I just put it in my cousin name mm. you understand what I'm saying to you? <laughs> like this is factual this is just factual information yeah, facts, this that's is factual facts. information so it's not, so it's not affecting your job when you get ready to go on a plot for certain jobs now they pull your credit. Ooh, yeah, to... but see, see, that's another barrier. That's another barrier, Sharice, that, mm -hmm. that got us out the game. So, right. so with with that, with that right there, with having that piece right there, you know what I mean? And the success, you know, that we done spoke about throughout this whole, you know, podcast. You know what I'm saying? I I would like to ask this question what is it that we intend to do to put somebody else on listen and now each each and every one of us got to chime in on this because I, I i this is what this platform is all about this king king dana brown girl i mean we all came together and took this motherfucking you know I don't know how you want to say vow oath or whatever the fuck we want to call it, but we all came together with this one. I think everybody has to develop that each one reach one mentality, that understanding that the gift and the knowledge that you have, it's not always about a come up. It's not always about, oh, I'm going to share what I know with Dana, with Portia, and I'm going to charge them $5,000 a piece to learn what I know. Sometimes you have to, you know, back and say, you know what? The influence that Dana has the community, the influence that portion.
talk to me with the youth. I know if I see what I know into them when it comes to credit, when it comes to budgeting, when it comes to home ownership, when it comes to saving and investing, if I share this with them, they're now going to influence, impact, and make knowledgeable a whole nother generation that's going to create change. I, I can take that hit of not charging them for that, but I think in our community, that's the mentality that we have to develop. It's not that you're giving your gift away for free. It's not that because we all, let's be honest, we paid a very high price for our gift. Mm -hmm. All of the H-E double hockey sticks that we went through throughout our life, all of the, the, the hard knocks we had to go through, not getting your degree until you got your GED, you know, failing it the first time, all of the things, the setbacks we had to go through, that, that's a price that we had to pay. But sometimes even in that, you have to understand when you have C and that, that person, your sister, your brother that looked like you, you have to identify where the fertile ground is and where to plant that seed. Understanding that that seed you plant is gonna yield a harvest. So I think if we develop that mindset of reaching back out without, oh, well, if I give it to Steve, then if I give it to him, he got these connections and it needs people gonna come to me and I'm gonna make a whole bunch of money. If we get off of that mentality and know that I'm giving something to him because of his sphere of influence that's gonna help change our community, then my blessing is going to be bigger than any doors or any people that Steve know. That's my perspective. That's how that's I. Move. That's it. That's it. That's an investment. You know what I mean? And, and truth be told, like I always say, like if I gotta go back home, then I'm gonna be fucking with open arms. <laughs> that's that's real shit. Motherfuckers know what you know. They know what the deal is with me. And that's the idea and of of investing. I'm sorry, go ahead, Portia. What was you about to say? Oh, no, 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 go ahead. My, what I was going to say was that's the idea of investing in the community. When people say that, you don't, a lot of times they don't get, that's not just about money that you're trying to pour. That's not about going and opening a business or going and spending money at a business in a community. Investing right. in a community is also investing your time, your knowledge, mm -hmm. you know what right. I'm saying, your know-how. Right. bringing somebody up you know what i'm saying you send the elevator back down yeah you know what i'm saying right. send that elevator back down i think Real we talk. i think we all need to be well not we all I, i'm gonna speak for myself i'm not gonna say we all but um like in positions like i'm in right now i learned so much along the way like i made it my business to like teach all the steps everything that i've learned every successful point that i've learned every place that i am no matter because I've learned, like, we get in the headspace of we can't teach a person until we have credentials to support what it is that we do. And so we like, oh, I don't have a degree in such and such, so I can't, you know what I mean? But listen, yeah. you can teach on your level. Or is it this is something, this is an epiphany I had a few years ago, like. So you use the word epiphany. <laughs> I always do. Yeah, I feel ahead. like you should have a daily epiphany. But um, okay. I had the epiphany a few years ago, like, why can't I teach on my level? Imagine you was a 20 year old mom or 22 year old dad, you feel me? You have no choice but to teach on your level to the best of your ability, right? And I'm sure some things you're gonna teach your children no matter what nobody say from this point forward that are gonna help them and progress throughout their life. And I feel like when you in a career or you wanna be an entrepreneur or whatever the case is, I think it's our duty to teach at our level. You feel me? And, and tell an individual, listen, there's more to learn, but I can teach you up to this. I think you should just do it regardless of what. It's people who think that it take an arm and a leg to start this type of business, to have your own brand. No, no, what it takes is your time, your patience. It takes for you to, to read up on some things, study up on some things, but it don't take a lot of money. I tell you that, in fact, you can make money before you have money, period. Like if you have the right brand, you have, if, if there's a need out there that you could fulfill, and you, and you know for a fact that that product can be put together, you can make money long before you ever have money. Like there's a such thing as pre-sales for everything on this planet. But a lot of us don't understand that. We we, we know pre-sales when we go get a CD, a DVD, some sneakers, PlayStation. A, t a PlayStation. <laughs> we, we know we understand pre-sales then, but we don't understand pre-sales when it comes to our own business. We think we got to get that bank loan for 10 racks and da 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 Listen. You can put a whole business together on paper that people will support financially before you ever have a product, bro. 
Mm-hmm. Because and it's so, it's little things like that that we don't yeah. we don't we don't catch. We just like zone past that part for some reason, and so we think that we can't teach it. So I feel like to answer your question, so I could cut my my long winded ass self short. Like I'm gonna continue to teach at my level, bro, because I know my level can make you a bag. I go in the store super confident, like I'm Pepsi. I'm like, listen, I can at least put two to four thousand in your store a month, automatically. I could do that in a two to three week span, automatically. They looking at me like, but your brand isn't known. No, it's not known to you. But what my brand come with is something totally different than every other brand in this store. See, everybody else is a vendor. They just drop off and go. I'm going to be a part of your business if you if we invest in each other. You feel me? So I'm going to guarantee you I'm going to bring that bread through your, through your organization. Shit, and, you just and made me want to set them up. I get a check. <laughs> you know? I get a check. I get a check before the CMOS has even been <laughs> packaged up. You feel what I'm trying to say? Like, so it's just the reality is. There are ways to get through pandemics and so on and so forth, but we weren't, I know our community wasn't, I know my community wasn't taught, and you from Camden, like I'm from Camden, we wasn't taught how to get it in these type of ways legally, you feel me, in these type of ways legally, so we feel like when you don't have a job, I heard somebody say something about being laid off, or when you get laid off, it's the end of the world, no, what about creativity, what about being innovative, you feel me, I watch here in Atlanta, I see on every street corner, you got two different people on the corner asking for money. The person on this side of the street, they have a product in their hand. They either selling water, they selling juices, they selling whatever that they could get their hands on and sell. And then on this side of the street, you got a homeless person who is, is panhandling with the board that says, you know, I need change and so on and so forth. They both get into the bag, but it's obvious which of these two people are going to be on what level come spring of next year. You feel what I'm saying? True. This, this guy is still going to be in a tent with a cardboard sign directly across the street from the guy who's doing 350 a day selling waters. So it's gotcha. all about being creative and innovative. And that's that's what I, I aim to teach throughout the rest of my years. You know what I mean? True. 40 and better is going to be all about this is how you could get to it, how to be a salesman, how to close, how to, how to prospect, how to find leads. That's the type of things that I want to bring to the community. You know what I'm saying? Because I was For never sure. taught that. That's what's up. Thanks, Steve. What's up, Portia? Oh. <laughs> so now I wanted to, I was going to touch a little bit on what you had said and what Sherry had said in regards to um, giving back to our community. We are our community, right? And our community is going to take from us um, before they'll take from anybody else. But the thing is, we also know the challenges that our community have in regards to receiving new information, right? And the, the challenges and the barriers that come along with it. So when we take that into consideration and we work with our community, we go out into our community and we present and we bring this knowledge to our community. We know they're gonna there's gonna be pushback. We know, you know the type of pushback you're gonna <laughs> be. And that's the biggest thing because new people are scared of what they don't know, right? Mm-hmm. They wanna be at a certain place, they want a certain life, <laughs> they're afraid of what they don't know. Mm-hmm. And that new is scary. And so we know that and we know that these are pushbacks. So having us go to our community and go in and actually, you know, showing by example, but also teaching, like you were saying, her on their level, right? Mm-hmm. Bringing it to their level is what's really, really important. And that's mm-hmm. how we're going to get through. And, unfortunately, you know, and then our youth, our youth is the biggest part. We catch our youth, I, I honestly truly believe we catch in our community, if we catch our youth early enough, right? we can make a difference and we can change generations. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't get me right. wrong. I, we all need help, especially our, you know, some of the older and those that are our age. But sometimes we get, we get to a point when we get to a certain age, you know, we get stuck. We don't want nobody telling us what to do. We don't want nobody, you know, we have to go looking for it at, at a certain point, right? And I believe I would say at the age range where we are, if you already have certain bad habits and you used to certain things until you are ready to change that Mm -hmm. it's not going to change no matter how much we bring it back to you right we bring it to them it's not going to change but if we catch our youth and that's why for me to me it's the most important to go to our youth right and to catch our youth because if we teach our youth you know their parents who are going through this cycle will be like oh wait there's something different what you doing what you learn right and then they're teaching right? They're showing, but they're also doing, and they're doing better, and they're going in a different path. They're becoming first generation 
high school graduates, first generation college graduates, they, they're changing our world, you nice. know, and they're teaching their, and then once they have kids, even if they already have, they're teaching and they're, they're changing. So our youth is really, I think, our answer into how we change our community and how we put our community on a different path, you right. know. Um, that's really really what my passion is and that's where you know and, and that's how I personally try to give back to my community yeah I'm part of a, a sorority that if I made a sorority okay I had to put that in there hey dad go ski no 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 they always get shit. mad they always get mad when I do that like, I don't know what that shit is but, no, um, I don't know what none of that shit is <laughs> no but you know, yeah, and I'm, I'm also part of um, NCNW, National Council of Negro Women, and we we, we do and we work we, we oh hit the road God. running with, in, in our community, you know. Mm. But for me, I always take those those youth initiatives, you know, and I go to the youth. Um, mm. So for me personally, that's how I do it, and that is how I think we're going to change the community and how where our community goes from in the future is through our youth. Real talk. Agreed. Real talk. I think um, being a father has uh, really brought out what type of gift it is that I could give back to the community in order to help them. Um, I know when my son was very little, he was very small. I just started asking, I started suggesting, you know, things like, you know, you could be the president one day. You know, now granted, I don't really want him to be the president, but I want to I want to instill that idea of the fact that the biggest thing in the world that he could be is attainable to him right if he does what he needs to do. Right. And he got that. Now you ask him today, actually I just asked him like was it was like a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, something like that. What does mm-hmm. he want to be? My son said, Well, it was kind of heartbreaking, but he actually said he wanted to be a scientist. But then he said he wanted to figure out how to make people not racist mm. and he wanted to cure disease mm. like cancer. Right. And that mm. was from him. That, that was, from was him. dope. Serious. You know, that Tell kid, him to take, it's going to take a smart ass kid. He can, he's going to be smart <laughs> as shit. He going to have to, hey, he going to have to create an app. <laughs> so, like, so, like, listen, <laughs> listen, the, the, nah, that's real talk. The that's gift dope, that though. I, the gift that I had that I feel like I am, good at giving back is the encouragement and the belief in yourself to know that you can do whatever it is that you want to do as long as you set your mind to do it it's not going to fall Mm -hmm. out of the sky it's not going to fall out of the sky no matter where you look at no matter where you see any kind of inspiration from there is nothing that will ever be handed to you if you work for something you reap what you sow you Mm -hmm. know faith without works is dead however you want to look at it from whatever faith whatever Mm -hmm. discipline you look at Whatever you put into something is what you're going to get out of it. Right. You know? And it's important to tell people that look like us that we can attain these things, you know, because a lot of times we don't believe it. We're not taught that we can attain these things. You yeah, know I, 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 I would I would definitely I'm definitely agree with that. Mm-hmm. I'm also I'm also add the, the fact that, you know, we could tell each other that and and. And I think you, you're a role model in so many different ways, King. You not only tell your son that, but you show him the way. Facts. Appreciate that. You know what I mean? You show it to him. Like you Facts. say you can do this and, and you show that. Yeah. I yeah, usually I tell my son, sit his black ass down somewhere. So it's just like, <laughs> it's just, if our parenting is just, is this two different ways, okay. you know, we can, but uh, okay. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I only, I only, <laughs> only got one. You know what I'm saying? Right. You might, your, your, your level of patience might be a little different. <laughs> right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It might be a little different. It's so good. It, it echoes something. Um, what y'all call him? Steve-O? Steve? Steezo. Steezo. Yeah. Um, I actually have a tattooed on my arm. And it's my name? Oh, you got that action. <laughs> Yo, you ain't even call me yet. You already got the joint right there. So, I mean, I'm with it. I'm just like, that's quick. You feel Yo, me? this guy <laughs> is crazy. But um, I'm going to just- Yo, dude gonna is it. really fucking crazy. Nah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. But I have tattooed on me, recreated me. That, that's been a theme of my yeah. life for well over 12, 15 years. But it's mm. a reminder that 
no matter where I go in life, no matter what cards life deals me, <clears throat> that every day that I wake up and I have breath in my body is a new day that I can recreate the life that I want. Wow. And I think if we continue yes. to like what King is doing with his son, you know, yeah, okay, you can do that. And still in that. And even if five years from now, his son's dreams change, guess what? You can recreate that dream to match where you are now in your life that yeah. you mature the mm -hmm. same as her you know from going being a barber to know that hey i want to do something different being able to constantly recreate our life no matter what phase no matter where we are it's just a daily reminder and i think in our community the more we instill that the more that we empower one another to know that it's okay I don't care what you did yesterday. I don't care what happened yesterday. I don't care what happened last year. It's a new day. Mm -hmm. You have the power to recreate the life that you desire. And I got you, my brother, my sister, and I'm <laughs> going to do it. So I, I, I did that. Um, I did a, a board at my job, right, for all the kids that come in. And like I said, I work with some youth that they, they there's just a lot of issues that they have. And the board says, every day is a new day. What are you going to do with it? Mm -hmm. Every day is a new day to a fresh start. What are you going to do with it? You know, and so that, that I love what you said, you know, because that is true. We, every day we get a chance to start over, start fresh and put ourselves on a different path. So mm -hmm. I don't care where you were going yesterday, every day you get to start over. And we can't think that we've arrived because I have it right now in my bedroom when I wake up every day, because some days I wake up and I'll be like, I really don't want to do this thing. I don't want to do this life thing. Some days I want to literally put my house on the market, sell it, and go stay in my brother-in-law basement in New Jersey and be like, well, let me just sell a, little sell a couple of houses every, you know, sell my two, three houses a year. I can take care of myself, but I'm going to go stay there with them. But they got to crazy dog. Come on with it. Come they got a crazy it. dog. They get rid Preach. of the dog down there. But you got to bring the mac and cheese, though. <laughs> no matter how successful your day may be there's stress there's struggle there's fear that comes with mm -hmm. entrepreneurship there's fear come that comes with employment mm -hmm. in America, you know before i became decided to step out and do this thing full time i was the first black person to hold the position and title i held at my corporate america job this okay. was oh. credit union in oh. Texas. They had never had a black person run their mortgage division. So here, this little black girl coming in here, country as they call it, coming yeah. in here telling. I'm glad you said that. Men, yeah. all the directors <laughs> who know nothing about finances, you're doing this wrong. This is what the law says. So I'm running their whole mortgage division. I'm writing new rules. I'm writing new regulations. That was intimidation. And they challenged me on every standpoint. So every day I'm waking up, I'm fearful. Is this going to be the day I'm going to get fired? Is this mm. going to be the day I'm to try to find something against me? You know, or whatever. So we always have to be not twice as good, but 10 times better than our counterparts. So we wake up with that mentality, whether you're in corporate America or if you're in your own business. Like, what can I do today to make sure that I can hire mm. in 2021 10 more employees that look like me? give 10 more opportunities with health benefits with you know this that and the third so it's a struggle so for me i have to remind myself every day okay whatever didn't work yesterday sharice let's 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 get back to the drawing board what can we do to change to make tomorrow better how can i recreate this okay last quarter that was a mess let's do something new but i think no matter where we are what we're doing in our life and our career that's something that we should be thinking daily and looking at right it. right, right. Mm -hmm. facts right yeah. facts. i'll tell you no, i just want to say one little yeah. piece mm -hmm. um because i know we, we've been on her for a little bit of time now um one mm -hmm. thing that you had said sharice though you, you went and Portia, the same thing you know today's a new day and push you said you have something in your room to remind you um there's like a a painting on my wall and it's the first thing i see when i wake up and it says life is beautiful because no matter what happens that's just what it is Life right. is beautiful. There's beauty in the struggle. Y'all are entrepreneurs. Y'all know it. And that's just what it is. Right. Amen to that. Facts. Amen to that. I think we had a we had a a, a real one today. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? What do you think? Yeah. It was pretty solid. I love it. Yeah. Um, I mean, it could have went on for a long time. Yeah, it could have. <laughs> it, 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 it I think all our episodes should really go on forever. Mm. I'm just think, trying to think. Go ahead. 
Dana had to been born in the 90s to have a Nintendo 64 shirt on and not the original Nintendo shirt on. You feel what I'm saying, King? You feel me on that? <laughs> because you it's that oh, third one, you, right? Baby. You do too because much. you would have had to be right? a 70s or 80s baby. The boy doing way the too much game. math. But, you know what I'm trying to say? So am I right or am I wrong? Yo, 92. the boy, the boy, the boy <laughs> doing way too much math. In high school, I feel so old. Yeah. <laughs> I, t- what you I tell you what, I tell you what, like, this is authentically my dream. I can respect that. Is that I have a community of people who, who are about that life. Yeah. See, the thing is, is that, I mean, the end result is not just the end result. You know what I mean? I, I probably, no, nah, I'm not even going to say probably. I, I won't be around, you know, to see, you know, what, what my dream really did. You know what I mean? I won't be around to see what I done started. But, as long as I know that not only myself but my people are moving in that direction, I can actually rest in peace. And with that being said, like the I I, I remember you guys talking about fathers, but do y'all know that the father of African American history went to high school at 20 years old? Yeah, Carter Woodson. Carter Woodson. Carter Woodson was the son of slaves. And he was the second man to graduate from Harvard behind W.E.B. Du Bois. Wow. Wow. All right. Carter Woodson was actually the first one to... He was the first one to graduate from Harvard that came that was a descendant of slaves. I mean, not a descendant, but a, you know, a, a child of, of slaves. You know, W.E.B. E. Du Bois, his, his mother and father were, were in slavery. Of course, you know, there was Jim Crow and oppression and things like that, but Carter G. Woodson said, stay in your lane. He ain't fuck with them cats. Word up. You know what he said? He said, if you take money from white folk, they gonna tell you what to do. Mm. You wasn't lying. That was that, that was his motto. Mm. That was his motto. So I say that to say this. Just like he said, it's never too late. Never too late. Mm. My dream was to publish something, and and I fulfilled my dream two years ago. I got the book. Oh, From damn. TD to college degree, how to control your successes and blessings. Okay. And and I never stopped writing since. See, it's the groundwork to say that yo success look like you. When you look in the mirror, success look like you. You think success look like somebody else, and that's why you can't connect yourself to it. But the day you understand that you possess the talent to be the next it, that's when we can arrive. Mm -hmm. I love Mm y'all. Peace. Love that. Peace. Hey, don't you go anywhere. Please subscribe, like, share, do all that stuff. Leave a message too, please. And please, yo, somebody told King I did this shit. I can't keep sneaking these intros and outros on if y'all keep telling, all right? Damn.